her bag to say the least um it was amazing prophecy was extra deep extra deep um and why did Papalo come to the door at class it was like looking through the door <laughs> and just watching her teach <laughs> it was so funny and he was like no i can't i can't come in because it will like throw everything off um we were like come in come in come in wanted him to walk in so bad so hopefully i'm telling you one of these days he's just gonna come in during wednesday night service um if you have the ability to be in the room be in the room don't miss this grace it was extra deep there was a crazy business grace released last night um if you were watching you saw that last week um a guy and his business partner had gotten prophecy and then this week he came back with his whole team and she had prayed for them all separately and called them out and then they were all together and part of one team it was so funny it was amazing, amazing, amazing what God did last night. Make sure you get connected. Watch the replay on YouTube, Prophetess Taryn and Tarver. Um, I honor my mom for the ability to even speak to you guys on this platform. Um, I'm super excited for what God has for us today. I want us to go to, we'll start with Psalms. Job 28, 28. Let's start there. Job 28, 28. Job 28, 28. Amen. If you guys haven't gotten signed up for the premium mentorship program, you're missing out. Okay. They'd be getting profit passion manuals, secret teachings from Mama T. She'll come on there, do private Zooms, answer their questions. They get to see and know everything. The only ones allowed in the Zooms. So many perks. They get our monthly magazine um, with amazing profits featured and advice columns, everything. Um, the only place to get official, you know, TNT news. So make sure you guys are getting a part of that. It, you can sign up on the website. Um, we have some really special things in store for them coming up. So I want to make sure you get connected while you can. So you don't miss it. All righty. Job 28, 28. Then we can, we can put, uh, we'll start at like 26. Okay. So this is, Job is a deep book and it was so crazy. You can leave it up while I talk really fast. I was like, God, what do you want me to say to the people this morning? You know, because I wouldn't probably went to sleep at 2 a.m. Do something. Woke up at 5 something. I was like, God, I don't know. <laughs> Give me something that you want me to speak to the people. And it was so crazy what I heard because it wasn't what I was expecting. God said, how do I translate this the way I heard it? He said, teach them to fear me, not the devil. Ah, it's going to be deep. It's going to be deep. He said, teach me to fear, teach them to fear me, not the devil. I was like, what? Okay, so we're going to break it down. Um, and, God, and we're going to be super blessed. God is super good. Let's start with it. Okay, 27. Then he saw wisdom and he declared it. He established it. Yes, and searched it out for his own use. And he alone possesses it. But to man, he said, behold, the reverential and worshipful fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. King James Version says, and to man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. We constantly want to, you know, another Psalms verse, you can drop it down. It says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, which means you can't be wise. You can't gain wisdom. You can't gain understanding without first understanding the fear of the Lord. And it was so crazy when God said this to me, he said, teach them to fear me, not the devil. I, and I want to explain this from 
my personal experience with God so you guys can grasp it. Because if you grasp this, you will feel you will fear no devil, you will fear no demon. Ah, there is nothing that will cause you fear. There's nothing that will cause you panic. You will understand the power and authority that you have given to you by God. You will be able to communicate that in the spirit. And you will realize fear, even your fear, belongs to God. And we're not talking about the same kind of fear. Let me tell you a story real quick. Something that something I something that I literally notably remember as giving me a, a, a new level of fear of God. <laughs> I'll never forget this. Um, before I came to this ministry and served under Mama T, I was a part of um, a different ministry, right? And I and they were a spiritual son of Benny Hinn, evangelist Benny, T- Benny Hinn. So I got to go right before COVID hit, he was doing spirit schools and Benny Hinn was just imparting everything he knew into everybody in the room. Like he was just telling everything he knew because he knows that soon he won't be here. He's going to be in heaven. So he was just giving us, we, I had notebooks and notebooks full of him teaching and teaching and teaching. And he did like, I want to say three or four full classes um, in his studio where he records before COVID hit and they shut everything down. So I remember he told this story. I'll never forget this because I was like, this fear of God came over me and it was just, it wasn't scary. It wasn't like fear, fear. It was, it was this new reverence, respect, awe, trembling. Like when you really know who God is, you're not worried about a demon. (laughs) You're not worried about a demon. You're worried about pleasing the king. You know that no one can, can, no power, no spirit can contest with you. You know you have power and authority over them, given to you by God. Your mindset shifts. And so we're at this spirit school, and he tells us, and Betty Hinn tells this story, and he goes, I forgot which countries they were talking about. I'll just use it as an example. He was talking about how um, he was in the US, right? And he was supposed to be traveling, I think, to some some country. Let's just say it's Africa to go preach, right? A prophet comes to him and says, do not travel to this country. Do not go. He said, if you travel to this country, you will die and God will judge you for dying early and not completing your assignment. (laughs) I was in like, when I heard this story, I don't know what it was. It was just this, something came over me and I was like, God, Let me let me be in the right place at the right time. Let me let me not miss the prophetic instruction ever. Let me not ever die early where you have to judge me for what I was supposed to accomplish and I didn't because of my own mistakes, because of my own decisions. It it begins, it put a prayer in me. I said, God, he said, I will judge you because God will judge you because you died early. Because you didn't listen, because you didn't know that. Ah, demons are the least. Papalo came on and did a live the other night. You guys, and it was so random and it was so late, but it was an amazing live. He said, your number one problem will never be the devil. The devil is small, small, small. If the devil is, if you're still worried about the devil this and the devil that, and I'm being attacked and this and this, I'm telling you there's another level for you. 
enter into this level where that is the least of your worries. He says, behold, I have given you power and authority over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means harm you. If you let that verse enter into you, just that one verse, imagine all the verses talking about your power and your authority and how the devil has no power. Jesus came. He, everything that you need, Jesus came and accomplished it for you. And he said, your biggest problem is not the devil. Your, your biggest problem is not sin. It's not condemnation, guilt, all these things, because Jesus came and he already paid that price. He said, the biggest problem that you will encounter will be people. Mm. Will be people. But if your heart remains right, if your heart remains pure, if you maintain the fear of the Lord, anything that happens, Anything that comes up, no matter what man says, no matter what men will do to you, you will prosper in your relationship with God, in your, in your life, in every area, you will continue to rise. And I, I remember this one time, God spoke to me and he said, even your fear that belongs to me. Why are you, oh, I'm telling you, this is deep. If you guys can catch this, this is so deep. You're sitting here scared of the devil, scared of what the demons are going to do to you. He said, even that fear belongs to me. Ah, Jesus. Job, if you read Job, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. We can pull up that scripture. Um, and Deja, see if you can help Janina, because she has the baby. See if someone else can pull up scriptures too. I don't want her to have to do it the entire time. Let's pull up the one where it says, do you tell the lightning where to strike? Somewhere in Job, it says, do you tell the lightning where to strike? He says, do you tell the ocean where to stop? If you have a full comprehension of who your God is, you will never fear anything again. You will be so lost in fear, awe, adoration for your God. You know, something, I wish, I wish a demon would really come and try and mess with me. Because the first thing I say is, I said, do you know who my mother is? Do you know who my father is? Do you know? who my great grandfather is. Do you know who my grandpa is? I'm telling you, ah, it is a death wish to mess with a child of TNT, to mess with a child of Elias. So I wish you would come mess with me. You will never return. You will go to the pit. You will be exposed today. This is the mentality of have anything messing with you. I wish you would try and do this to me today. Ay, 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 ay. I'm telling you, you should fear no demon. You should fear no spirit. If you have a true understanding of who your God is, of who your family is. She said, I think it's Job 38, 35. And we can, we can try that. And we can scroll up too. Yeah, this is it. You can scroll, uh, scroll up a bit. This is so deep. Uh, do you understand who your God is? Um, you can leave it up while I talk real quick. Guys, sometimes we get lost in our heads. when We don't really understand who our God is who this God is. We cannot be lost in the motions, in the everyday life, in what we have to do, or we don't take time to understand who it is we truly worship and we serve and we believe in. Scroll up a little bit. 
All of this is so good. Uh, keep going. <laughs> Let's just start at the top. <laughs> this is so deep. So Job, in the previous chapter, Job is crying out to the Lord. Ah, we need to read the whole thing, but we'll start here. He said, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this dark? Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins now, your loins like a man, and I will demand of you. And you declare to me, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare to me if you have and you know understanding. Ah, Jesus, anytime you get scared of a demon, any, anytime you feel like you're being attacked, I'm telling you, you could quote this scripture. Where were you guys when God laid the foundation of the earth? <laughs> you tell me if you have no understanding. Do you know who my God is? Who measured the earth? You tell me if you know. Who stretched the measuring line upon it? I'm telling you, you need to know and you need to fear your God. You need to be in awe of him. Upon what were the foundations of it fasted? Who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it broke forth and issued out of the womb? When I made the clouds, the garment of it in the thick darkness, swaddling band for it. And I marked it for my appointed boundary and set bars and doors. And thus said, thus how far shall you come and no farther? And here shall your proud waves be stayed. God is keeping the entire ocean at bay, 75% of the entire earth. He's hanging the earth in perfect gravity. Do you know what he's doing constantly with ease? And we're worried about a, a demon, a created being, a created spirit. Ah. Our perceptions must be right. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? Who is causing the sun to rise every day? Who is causing the sun to set? Who is causing all these things, the dew to be upon the grass, the rains to come, the winds to come, the plants to grow? so that light may get hold of the corners of the earth and shake the wickedness of night out of it. It is changed like clay into which a seal is pressed and things stand out like many colored garment. From the wicked, their light is withheld and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you explored the springs of the sea or have you walked in the recesses of the deep? Yeesh. They say, I forgot which percent of the ocean is, is, has actually been explored. It's a ridiculous amount. I don't know, 5%. I don't know if any of you guys know that fact. We have no idea. He said, have you explored the springs of the sea? Have you walked in the recesses of the deep? I'm telling you, if you have any part of pride in you, you read this chapter, <laughs> you will be humbled. You will say, God, I fear you. I honor you, Lord. Father, I worship you. I am nothing without you. I am dust without you, God. Anything that I have is because of you. Anything good in me is because of you. Hmm. Have you comprehended? Oh, let me not skip this one. Have the gates of death been revealed to you? Or have you seen the doors of deep? deep darkness. Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me if you know it all. Jesus. Where is the way that where light dwells? And as for darkness, where is its abode? That you may conduct to it to its home and may know the paths to its house. You must know since you were born then, or because you're so extremely old, God has a sense of humor. Can you imagine him? He's saying this to Job. Oh, you must know this. You think you've had it hard. You think you've lived. You think you're so old. You think you know all this. Tell me all of these things. In a second, you say, I, will, I know nothing, God. 
I know nothing except what you reveal to me out of your goodness and your grace. Have you entered the treasuries of the snow or have you seen the treasuries of the hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble for the day of battle and war? By what way is the light distributed or the east wind spread over the earth? Scroll down. It's so good. Keep going all the way down. I mean, it's just verse after verse after verse. Has the reign of father who has begotten the drops of dew. Are you catching this? Are you catching the God that you serve? You can go down. Can you bind the chains, the clusters of the saws called, I don't know, or loose the cords of the constellation Orion? Do you know the ordinances of the heavens? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that an abundance of waters may cover you? Can you send lightnings that they may go and say to you, here we are? Ah. You know, the world loves, you can drop around down for two seconds. The world loves this idea of superheroes. Of, of gods that can control thunder, of gods that can control this and that. The earth is attracted to those things, not knowing. He said, she said, God is flexing. He is not knowing. Our God is greater than any superhero we could coin up. He's greater than ever, any Avenger, any Batman, any. He controls everything. If you think Thor is cool, <laughs> encounter my God, encounter my Jesus. But well, why is it that us as humans are drawn to that? Because we're looking for him. Our souls are hungry to encounter an all-powerful, almighty God, but just not all-powerful and almighty. Because if God was only all powerful and almighty, if he didn't have love, if he didn't have mercy, if he didn't have goodness, if he didn't have kindness, ah, oh, who would not want to be under that God? But our Jesus, from the very beginning, before there even was a demon for us to come against, we had the victory. It is a rigged fight. You must understand. If you are battling something, it is for the glory of God to come out of it. We cannot fear our circumstances and what we're going through. We must have a true understanding, a fear of the Lord, a respect and awe, a wonder. And we must recognize that if whatever we are going through in this moment, in this present time and circumstance, is only so a testimony may arise, so a victory may arise. Let's go to there's like so many proverbs, so many proverbs, so many psalms talking about the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the instruction for wisdom. And before honor comes humility. If you are humble before your God. If you are truly humble before your God, if you are truly humble before the leaders God has put in your life and before you, honor will come upon you. Promotion will come upon you. True wisdom, true understanding will come upon you.
Let's go to Isaiah 33. Isaiah 33 um, towards six. And then after that, we're gonna do Proverbs 15, 16. Proverbs 15, 16. Uh, uh, let me see the first verse real quick. There you go down. Start with five. The Lord is exalted for he dwells on high. He will fill Zion with justice and righteousness, with moral and spiritual rectitude in every area and relation. And there shall be stability in your times. An abundance of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The reverent fear and worship of the Lord is your treasure and his. The King James Version says, And he will be the stability of your times, a wealth of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. When you and you can go to Proverbs 15, 16. When you have an accurate perception of your God. True worship flows out from your heart. And nothing can stand against. Nothing can stand against you. It says, What shall I fear? What can man do to me? God is the light of my life. He is the strength of my life. We have an accurate perception of our God. Casting out demons is easy. They will manifest from your presence. I'm telling you, the light that will be in you. Ah. Have you wondered how Mama T can look at someone and then demon leave. If there's one thing I always tell them, like she knows, I can't even, an innumerable, you cannot count the amount of scriptures that Mama T knows, but one verse I will ever associate with her, Luke 10, 19. That is her verse. That is her, that is what she embodies and what she carries. If you do not receive power and authority from her ministry, from being on her, you should never be attacked by a demon you should know the power and authority god has given you you should never permit tolerate allow do you know who we're under deliverance runs in this family so deep We're not out here struggling to cast out demons. We're not out here fighting with spirits. There is a knowledge and an understanding of the power and authority God has given to us and we walk in it. There is a fear and a worship that we have of, of God that causes everything else to be. This is down here, this is small, small. This is small, small. Amen. Proverbs 15, 16. This is deep. Let me see uh, 14 real quick. I love Proverbs. We'll get some extra, some bonus ones in there. 16 is the one I really want, but it all is deep. Let's start with 13. A glad heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. The mind of him who has understanding seeks knowledge and inquires after it and craves it. But the mouth of the self-confident fool feeds on folly. Yeesh. 
all the days of the desponding and the afflicted are made evil by anxious thoughts and forebodings. But he who has a glad heart has a continual feast regardless of circumstances. This is so deep, but I'm going to try and stay focused. 16, better is little with the reverent, worshipful fear of the Lord than great and rich treasure and the trouble with it. Oh, this is deep. Uh, King James says, better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and turmoil with it. He's saying better that you have little and a true understanding and fear of God than if you had everything in the trouble that came with it. I'm telling you, hmm, wisdom is the principal thing. And what is wisdom? It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning. It is phase one. It is step one of wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get what? Get understanding. And wisdom is what? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So with all you're getting, with all you're searching for, they can read the Bible and they can know all the scriptures and they can go to theology school and they can graduate, graduate and they can have a, a doctorate in this and that and that. And they cannot know the fear of God. They cannot know God really is. It says this is the beginning of wisdom. Better that you have little and you have this. Ish. You don't have to pull it up, but I'm gonna read a couple more. Proverbs 19:23. It says, The fear of the Lord, it leads to life. You cannot truly live. Until you truly grasp this, you are not truly li living. So that one may sleep and be satisfied, untouched by evil. Actually, let's pull this one up because God's speaking about this verse right now. Proverbs 19, 23. God just, God just spoke about if you are... having nightmares if you're being attacked in your sleep this verse he wants you guys to be meditating and reading this verse you need to read it at least three times in the day and pray once in the morning once in the once in the afternoon once at night before you go to sleep and god is saying if you were being attacked in your sleep if you're being played by nightmares this is a prophetic instruction for you guys right now. Read it once in the morning and then pray. Read it a second time in the afternoon and then pray. Read it a third time at night and then pray. This is so deep. He says the reverent, fear, worshipful fear of the Lord, it leads to life. He who has it rests satisfied he cannot be visited with actual evil if you guys catch this right now i'm telling you you will not be visited by evil no demon can touch you he who has it rests satisfied if you i'm telling you and this was literally the exact point i was trying to make this verse is deep i don't even know this verse existed i just found it right now this is deep what i was trying to communicate the best I could was this verse. If you have a worshipful, reverent fear of the Lord, you will be satisfied with that fear. So much so, another evil cannot come to you and cause and bring you fear. And this is really funny. I'm going to tell you guys something. I don't think I've ever said this like out loud, but this is literally like, this is what I, um, like something I've said before, like, it's so funny, actually, like, um, like I'll be laying down and you guys know, like in the middle of the night, you know what I mean? You wake up and what's so crazy, you know what I just remembered? I'm just about to talk for a second, but you guys are going to get something out of this, I promise, because that verse, ah, that just did something to me. If you truly meditate on that verse, Jesus, receive all that verse has for you. Um, so last night, 
before I went to bed. It was so late. Apopolo had went live again last night. And as soon as his live ended, I sat there for a second. And I just felt this presence. This presence in the room. Not a demonic presence. It was a heavy, deep presence. Like God was there and it was terrifying it is scary <laughs> we can pray god i want to see an angel god i want to encounter you this and this and this and then the second his presence comes in anywhere i'm telling you you are this fear comes over you because it's so holy it's so there aren't words to describe it. And so this presence is here and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like worshiping God. And it was so amazing. It was so amazing. Well, this is what's funny. If, I, if there's ever like, if I ever wake up in the middle of the, middle of the night or something or whatever, it, it doesn't, it's only happened like a couple of times where like you have a dream and you wake up and you send something, you know, I need to get up and I need to pray. I need to cancel this. I need to bind it. Or if you wake up and you feel a presence that's not supposed to be there, right? You guys have to know when you do, what to do with things like this because it's going to happen. If, if the enemy tries to send something to do something or if you ever, I remember like one time I woke up and there was something, something wasn't right. I want to say like something was off and I remember saying <laughs> it was along the lines of like so I was rebuking go right but I remember my first thought was I was like they do not want God to come. They do not want the presence of God to come in this room right now. They do not want the, an angel to come in this room right now. The second I call on my God, I'm like, no demon wants to come and mess with me because the second I was like, we're both going to be scared. <laughs> we're both going to be scared because the second I'm telling you, if you understand how holy, how there's no words for the presence of God. For an angel to come that stands in the presence of God. It says Daniel couldn't even stand in the presence of an angel, how much more of Jesus himself. Bow down, he said, let's pull that up. Um, it's not Daniel 10. Daniel, I can't remember which chapter it is. He encounters the angel and he, he couldn't even stand up. His whole be body became weak. The angel had to come and touch him to give him enough strength. He said, it was it's as if I was dead. Dead. And an angel had to come and touch him just to give him enough strength to stand up and talk to him. I'm telling you, this demon should be scared of you. Not the other way around. They should be terrified of you. If they're assigned to you, they should say, please do not send me. Please do not make me go to them. They will cast me out. They will send me to the pit. I will, exp like, they should be scared of you. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision of this heavenly being. For the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great trembling fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. I'm telling you, your fear belongs to God. So I was left alone and I saw this great vision and no strength was left in me. For my fresh appearance was turned to paler. I grew weak and I grew faint with fright. This is deep. Then I, was it Daniel 10? Okay, look at God. Then I heard the sound of his words. And when I heard the sound of his words, I fell on my face in a deep sleep.
with my face sunk to the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me unsteadily upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. So he's face down in the ground, sunk, <laughs> weak, faint with fright, terrified. Your fear belongs to God. He says the hand touched him and it sets him. He goes up to his knees and to the palms of his hand. He's still on all fours. And the angel said to me, oh, Daniel, you greatly beloved man, understand the words that I speak to you. Stand upright for to you I am sent. And while he was saying these words to me, he could finally stand up and he's still trembling. This is not even God. This is an angel. I stood up trembling. And he said to me, fear not, Daniel, from the first day that you set your mind and your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard. I have come on a consequence of in response to your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, he withstood me for 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief celestial princes, he came to help me, for I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand. What is to befall your people in the latter days? For the vision is for many days yet to come. And when, <laughs> so deep. And when he had spoken to me according to these words, I turned my face towards the ground and was dumb. Couldn't even speak. And behold, one in the likeness of the sons of men, he touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and I spoke. He could not even speak until one of the sons of men came and touched his lips. Oh, my Lord, by reason of this vision, sorrows and pains have come upon me and I retain no strength. For how can my Lord's servant, who is feeble to talk with this, my Lord, for now has no strength remains in me, nor is there any breath left in me. Then they touched me again, one whose appearance was like that of a man, and he strengthened me. He said, oh man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be to you. Be strong, yes, be strong. And when he had spoken to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak for you have strengthened me. Your fear belongs to the Lord. Your trembling belongs to God. Was it Mark 15, 16 says, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils in my name. This is signs that follow them who believe. 16, 17, not, not signs that follow them who've been walking with God for 10 years. Not signs that you have to have this amount of battles before you can cast out a demon. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils in my name. The first level. Every single one of us should be able to cast out demons. No, I don't want you guys scared of evil. I don't want you guys scared of the unknown. I don't want you anxious about the future. God does want, doesn't want you to have any of these things. He says, your fear belongs to me. Your trembling belongs to me. And this is the beginning of wisdom. That verse was so deep, 15, 16. No, what was it? Nineteen twenty three, Proverbs nineteen twenty three, the fear of the Lord it leads to life, so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. Mm. Proverbs fourteen twenty six says, "In the fear of the Lord there is strong confidence." Let's pull that one up. 
Proverbs 14, 26. Because that's what comes next. In the fear of the Lord, you get a confidence. Do you know who my God is? You want to mess with me? Do you want to encounter my God? You want to encounter the power of my God who lives in me, who I am one with? Because if you mess with him, you mess with me. If you mess with me, you're messing with him. You come against me, you're coming against him. You should be terrified, I'm telling you. Ah, you should be scared. Proverbs 14, 26. We'll start 25. A truthful witness saves lives, but a deceitful witness speaks lives and endangers lives. In their reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. If you're lacking confidence, grow in this area. Grow in the worshipful fear of the God. Worship Him. Meditate on how great He is. There is your confidence. And his children shall always have a place of refuge. This is deep. Reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. That one may avoid the snares of death. Verse over verse over verse. Praise the Lord. How blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. There are promises. You can drop it down. There are promises attached to fearing him. There are promises attached to fearing your God. You will be blessed. You will have the fountain of life. You will sleep satisfied. No evil will be able to be come near you. Ah, these are deep. Extra deep. Extra, extra deep. Try to wake the kids up without having to get up. While I call them. Let's go to. This is. Psalms. Go to Psalms 2. Psalms 2. Scroll down a bit. I love this verse. I love this verse. Psalms 2, 4. He who sits in the heavens laughs, <laughs> and the Lord has them in, der in derision, and in supreme contempt he mocks them. He who sits in heaven laughs. God is never thrown off by anything. Never. I love that verse. He who sits in heaven, he laughs. He laughs at his enemies. He speaks to them in his deep anger and troubles. He terrifies and confounds them in his displeasure and his fury. I will, decree, I will declare the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. This day I declare I have begotten you. Ask of me, I will give you the nations as your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth as your possession. 
You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like potters wear. Now, therefore, O you kings, act wisely. Be instructed and warned. O you rulers of the earth, serve the Lord with reverent awe and worshipful fear. Rejoice and be in high spirit with trembling, lest you displease him. Ah, your fear belongs to God. Let's pull up this verse. Um, it's talking about, let me find it right now. God just broke this thing. I love this verse so much. It's the one that's talking about basically when the when the devil's really going to be revealed and they say, "Is this the one? Is this the one who you have you guys have been fearing? Is this the one who deceived the world? This <laughs> says Isaiah fourteen. Yes, I think it's fourteen sixteen. Isaiah 14, 16. Ah, I love this verse. Because it puts perception into how small and insignificant and stupid the devil is. You know, Christians are funny. Christians are really funny. The devil should be the least of your concerns. Those who will see you will gaze at you and consider saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook the kingdoms? Is this the one who made the world look like a wilderness and overflow its th cities, who would not permit its prisoners to return home? All of the kings of the nations, all of them lie sleeping in glorious array, each one in his own specular. But you are cast away from your tomb like a loathed growth or premature birth or an abominable branch of the family. This is deep. And you are clothed with the slain, those thrust through the sword who go down to the stones of the pit, into which carcasses are thrown, like a dead body trodden underfoot. You shall not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. Ah, Jesus, I'm telling you, your fear belongs to the Lord. He said, is this the one that made the whole earth tremble? He's nothing. It is deception, children of God. Let the scales, you can drop it out. Let the scales fall off your eyes this day. Because I'll say this, when you understand how great God is, how powerful God is, you understand how powerless everyone else is. You understand it is not a competition. You know, okay, I'll tell a quick story and then I want us to go and I want us to connect to this word I want us to give because God is doing something so powerful. I was at the vet. I had to take the dog to the vet. Okay, guys. And this is a really funny story. I had to take the dog to the vet and it's a huge Rottweiler. He's huge, right? He loves me, okay? I have no problems with this dog but he has to go and he's getting neutered. I take, I'm take. i taking him back in to get the stitches out, right? I go there and everything's cool. We're chilling, I'm chilling. Like I finally get him to lay down, you know, like we're just chilling, waiting for the doctors. The second two men come out with the uniform. My, this dog, and this dog is just like Bishop, by the way. I hope you guys know, like dogs take on the personality of their owners. This dog goes berserk, crazy. I'm not even talking and just growling. No, this is full on. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to rip you to shreds. 
Rottweiler mode in the vet. Goes crazy. I can barely hold him. And he's trying to kill everybody in the vet's office. <laughs> Going crazy. They can't get close to him to put a muzzle on. They can't get close to him to give him a shot to knock him out. They can't get close to him to give him the little medicine to knock him out. He will not have it. He's not having it, okay? So I'm dealing with this. He's so heavy. I'm trying to hold him back. He's trying to attack a Halloween decoration. He's truly, literally trying to mangle a Halloween decoration. And he's trying to attack the nurses and the doctors. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. And in the middle of all this, I get a phone call from this girl. So I finally have to, like, I'm like, I don't know who it is. So I call the number back. And it's this girl. She's calling me. And she's like, I'm being attacked by witches. I'm being attacked by witches. I didn't know this girl was a witch. I, I, I ate with her. I gave her some of my hair. Just a craziness. I don't know what she's talking about. She's freaking out. She's panicking so much so I can't. And she's like crying and she's like, it's a, it's a crazy. And I, and I literally am like, okay. First of all, calm down. Because it, I don't know, my spirit was agitated. My spirit was agitated. Why? I said, this girl does not know who her God is. She goes to Revel Revelation Church. She's under Mama T. My spirit was upset. Because I said, she does not know who her God is. She would not be sitting here freaking out over a witch. Witches have no power. It says, suffer not a witch to live. No witchcraft has power against you. If you understand and truly fear the Lord. There is a calmness that comes over you. I was, my spirit was mad. I said, she doesn't know who her God is. And I was upset. I said, calm down. I said, breathe. I said, go watch this live. You know, some people, like, they want you. She wanted me to get on Zoom and have Mama T pray for her. And I said, Mama T is taking a nap. <laughs> um, I, I can't, you cannot call the prophet for everything. You must know who your God is. I said, calm down. I said, I sent her alive. This is what I had her do, guys, as a prophetic instruction I told her. I said, watch this live on witchcraft that Papa Lo did two years ago. And calm down. I said, get a, hold on, get a hold of yourself. Sit down and really listen to everything that he's saying right now in this life. Because I'm going to tell you this. Some, some people might be like, oh, you, they would have thought that was weird. That it wasn't immediately like, oh, let's go into prayer. Let's bind it. Let's break it. And have the same like, sit like, it was like anxiety. She was trying to, excuse me. I said, calm down. Watch this live. Sit down and listen to what they're saying. Because if I just went into prayer for her, if we just handle this one situation, there's going to be a witch next week that comes to her and does the same thing to get her to get to act like this. You need to have the fear of the Lord in you. You need to know who your God is. And you need to have the word of God enter into you. I'm telling you, if they would... If, if the demonic realm can see that they can do this to you just by doing one thing, they're going to send a, a witch next week. They're going to send an another witch the next week. These witches have no power, no authority. You are greater than them. Your God is incomparable. I said, sit down and listen to this live. Call me back when you finished. It was like an hour and a half live. You know what happened? <laughs> She messaged me and she goes, I realized, she goes, I realized I've been practicing witchcraft. Number one. Number two, she said, I disobeyed a prophetic instruction from Mama T. That's why I'm being tormented where I'm at. Should I follow the instruction? I said, I said, if I were you, I would humble myself before God. And I would listen to what she originally told you. Because if you dis disobeyed a prophetic instruction, so basically, Mama T had told her not to move here. 
She disobeyed the instruction. She was out from under her covering. She was in a place she should not be and she was susceptible to being attacked. All this from just listening to what I said. She goes, I disobeyed a prophetic instruction from Mamati. Should I, should I move back home? I said, if I were you, I would do exactly as she said. I would humble myself before God. I would humble myself before her. If the enemy knows he can get to you, he will, <laughs> he will get to you, he will get to you, he will get to you. If you are easily moved, if you are easily rocked, if you are easily in fear, if something, if something like that, it says, suffer not a witch to live. Ah, the Bible says that. I do not, I'm not one of those people, witchcraft this, the devil that, this, this, this. I'm telling you, your fear belongs to the Lord. It gives you a confidence. Amen. It gives you a confidence. I want us to go and I want us to give. I want us to go and I want us to give. And a new confidence, a new boldness, a new revelation of who your God is will enter you. I'm telling you, it will be supernatural. When I woke up this morning, this is what God said. This was not my idea. This is what God, he said, he, a new revelation will enter into you. A new level of power will enter into you, will flow from you. You will be able to call someone who's dealing with something and give them the answer. You will be able to, if you have not, rebuke demon, cast out spirits. I'm telling you, you are moving into a new dimension of deliverance, of revelation, of understanding, of wisdom. If you are struggling with demonic attacks in your sleep or otherwise, you need to sow a seed today. If you can, minimum $70, minimum 70. I am telling you, we're building an altar today. If you can more, minimum, that's for saying, I only have this. If I only had $70 and I was being attacked in my sleep, I would take my $70. I would give it to God right now. I would build an altar and say, God, let me understand you let me worship you only give me the understanding that i need so that i will never that evil will not come to me that i will rest satisfied i'm telling you this is what i would do ah! a sacrifice moves the spirit of god minimum seven dollar seed Everybody who sows, I'm telling you, I see something supernaturally coming over you this day. I see the power of God coming over you guys. We're going to come back and we're going to pray and something's going to happen. Something so powerful. I already feel the presence of God so strong in this room. Because he wants you guys to elevate. He wants you guys to go to the next level. You cannot stay where you're at. Amen. Something with a seed of seven. Minimum seven if you can. If you cannot, has to have a seven in it. Let's go and let's give it. We're going to come back and we're going to pray. Shut
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you right now. Father, I pray that wherever anyone is listening to this right now, that the presence of God would fill the room. Father, I pray that you would release new revelation, Lord, the new fear of the Lord every, every, over every person right now, God. Father, that we would worship you in spirit and in truth, God, that we would be reverently fearful and in awe of you, God, that we would, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, that the power of God would hit every single person under the sound of my voice, Father, that every person who's sown and connected to this word, God, that they would grow quickly, quickly, God, quickly in the revelation knowledge of your presence, God that power and authority would be second nature to them, God, that they would go and they would deliver the captives, they would set them free, that they would heal the brokenhearted, that they would open the eyes of the blind, God, that through the worship and the fear of the Lord, that their wisdom would be beyond anyone in this earth, God, that they would be set apart, Father. Father, touch them right now. Release your angels to touch them right now, God. I see some people, your hands are getting hot. I see fire hitting your hands. I see some of you, the fear of God is coming over you right now. Even during the playback, when people rewatch this, I see the fear of God coming over some of you so much where you cannot stand, where you worship truly and holy. Thank you, Jesus. I see testimonies coming from this right now, from this message this day, because it came from you, God. Not from a man, but from you, God. I thank you, Lord, that they will not be tormented by devils and demons, that they will rise up in the power that you have given them, God. I thank you, Father, for this ministry, Father. I thank you for our prophetess. I thank you that her grace is flowing down to every single person who connects with her this day. Father, touch them. Father, touch them. Father, touch them. And let it bring you great joy, Father. Let it bring you great joy. And let it please you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, oh, it's deep in here. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Is there any questions before we hop off? Any questions? Let me check YouTube. I haven't even looked at YouTube one time. Woo, Jesus. Thank you, God.
Any questions? Yes, we have Ms. Ashley Boykin. Go ahead. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, this, this word this morning. It really is what I needed to hear. Ava. Um, I, I have a question around um, basically like the atmosphere that's created. Because you were mentioning about all of a sudden you wake up in the middle of the night or you'll all of a sudden have this random fear of the unknown come over you and you mm -hmm. just prayed mm -hmm. or you just... Yeah, you just prayed or all of a sudden you just get afraid of just something and then like you just want to go hide mm -hmm. um but you know that you just prayed and you know that you believe in god and i don't know if those things are just thoughts or if it's a demonic attack or if it's something that i'm calling on myself because when you when you had i think it was a scripture of proverbs the one that you just found proverbs 20 or 32 I can't remember. Uh -huh. the, um, one, the one that was saying, um, no evil will be able to come to you in your sleep. You'll sleep satisfied. Yes. Right before going to bed. And it's like, okay, is something going to pop out? Because like, why am I afraid all of a sudden? And I just prayed and I just, you know, <laughs> asked God to protect me. And then now all of a sudden I want to go hide in my closet. <laughs> so I'll tell you what I'm getting prophetically, and then I'll tell you something just for everybody. Number one, you cannot go to the next level without passing a test. If you're praying and something comes to you afterwards, it's for you to rise up and pass that test, for example. It's not that nothing will ever not come to you. It's not that you won't ever have something try, a demonic presence try to come in your room or something like this or try to be attacking you. It's not that that will never happen. It's that now that power and authority must rise up in you. So God is giving opportunities for you to use everything that you're learning. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. You're literally, it means you're doing something right. So you just pray this, 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 and then you feel attacked. Use everything inside of you that has been deposited in you. Does that make sense? It's not that yes. these things will cease to happen. It's that you have power and authority. When you tell it to go, it will never be able to return. They will test you. I'm telling it's they, it is tests. Because the demonic realm wants to see if they have a place to be if they are allowed to be somewhere the demonic realm functions off of sorry i was just thinking about something rights do they have a right legally to be there anyone who's possessed the demon has a legal right to be there that's why i do when you cast it out there's different things that you have to do for different people they entered in different ways. They have a legal right through different things. Maybe the family did witchcraft. So the, that demon has a legal right. The offspring, for example. You know what I mean? So they are only there by rights. If you take away its right, it, cannot, it can't be there. So for example, this is for everybody. <laughs> If you're if you're in your if something's coming in your sleep and turning to you, if there's a if there's a demonic someone, for example, a demon's trying and it's trying to like choke you in your sleep. You have to understand the ability to take away the right to be attacked. If we're not binding, if we're not canceling, if we're not rising up in our power and authority, what's going to stop it? Because it's only the presence of the power of God. Demons don't fear the anointing. Demons fear the presence of God. Demons bowing down to Jesus, right? All these scriptures, begging Jesus, please don't cast me out, this, this, this. So a lot of what you're going, this is what I'm picking up just prophetically. A lot of what's happening to you is because God wants to elevate you. He wants you to rise up 
not in fear, not in questioning, not in even overthinking. He wants your spirit to start leading you deeper. Because it's, it's like you have every piece. It's like you have it all there. But now it's time for it to be released from you. Amen. God, God, Amen. Is looking, God is looking to elevate you. He's looking to promote you. All the things that you've seen, all the things that you're connected to. It's time for you to rise up and start doing these things. And don't overthink it. But I will say another thing. Fear is not always demonic. Being scared, you know, that's a natural thing, right? You have to be able, you can discern when it's an evil presence. You can discern where it's just like, oh, I'm kind of scared. I'm like, you know what I mean? It's really dark right now. It's like that, like regular fear, right? So you have to discern which, which what you're facing at that time. That's why every angel, because they're terrified. Oh, God, of an angel. Like, it could be a head, last night in my room when, when it was a presence. It was not a demonic presence. It was, a, it was a heavenly presence. I was terrified. I was scared. I had to literally be like, you know what I mean? That's why every angel that comes says, fear not. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because it's the body's natural reaction to fear the spiritual, spiritual things. But there's a difference between that and like demonic, a demonic attack in the presence. So you need to discern what's going on. And then God will lead you how to do it. If it's something demonic to you, I'll tell you, tests will come to you guys. How many times have you heard Mama T say, I learned this, and then that same thing happened? If God wants to promote you in the spirit. Things will, weird things will start happening. <laughs> and it's a blessing. I'm telling you, it's, it's an opportunity to grow quickly. Does that help answer the question? Yes, thank you. Amen. Any other questions on here? This happened to me. This helps. I had to do this. Amen. Any other questions on YouTube before we go? I feel like I got touched by God during that prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll say this quick story before I go. There's these kids, I don't know what they're doing out there by themselves. I don't trust it. It's still too quiet out there. Um, last year on my birthday, my birthday is this Friday. Last year on my birthday, <gasps> I, casted, I was casting demons out. So funny. We had just done a, a live or something. And there was somebody in the house. The moment she was upstairs on the phone or something. This definitely explained a lot. I thank God. I thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, amen. Thank you. I received all the birthday wishes. Guys, pray for me. Um, Mama T was upstairs on the phone or something, like just chatting it up. Meanwhile, I'm not saying this. I gave this person a hug. This is what happened. I'm going to tell you a story because it's extra deep. I gave this person a hug, right? As I'm hugging them, I feel the demons start to manifest. <laughs> and they start like they start going like this and they start like you know shaking ah! i let go they're on the ground and this demon is going crazy demons de this is not one demon this was demons the demons a lot of some demons and i start casting it out and go go this da, 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 da. doing what my mom does These spirits, these demons are leaving. And then I say, renounce this. I start having the person saying, renounce it. Each time they're renouncing these things, the deliverance is getting crazier and crazier and crazier. It's going on for a, a really long time because it was, oh, it's like crazy. A lot, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. 
And I get to this point, finally, I'm down there for forever. Tell me why mom calms down because <laughs> he hears screaming, the demon's screaming, all this stuff flopping around. And I'm just like, casting it out. <laughs> she comes down half, she's on the phone. <laughs> so funny she comes halfway down the stairs and looks <laughs> and goes she goes yeah tell him renounce this <laughs> it goes back upstairs <laughs> she's she's like shouting over the she's not coming down to help me she knows it's her kid she better you better do it you better cast out that demon she goes tell him renounce this <laughs> so randomly she'll just walk around she'll be like never to return she'll just adding in like another sentence like she'll tell do this tell this and i'm like doing what she says she's not coming out there to cast the demon i wasn't like mom mom as were as her children ah oh, you better be ready you better be ready and when then it finally got to the last thing, i said i said this last one this is i know this is not my rank this this thing is i've done everything i could do I cast out everything that I could cast out. And so when I, I said, I, I tell, I was like, mom, okay. <laughs> she can come. She's not coming down. She was not going to come down the whole time. I was like, mom, like this one, this one's yours. <laughs> she comes down. She points it. She points at it. The body's like a snake with her on the floor. And she gets that last demon and she gives them the deepest prophetic word I've ever heard. And they go and they do absolutely opposite of everything that she said to them. And they lost their deliverance and they fell everything she said would happen happened to them because they didn't she didn't obey the word but what am i saying this to say we should be a yeah jesus it was crazy it was crazy it was crazy well i'm saying this to say this is our inheritance this is our inheritance this is a family this is as we believe in god as we this will come easy to you said i love that your best cheerleader will be your parents even even when they're spiritual it's too it was so funny i wish i could have recorded it but i was like down here like kathy don't even like is she really not coming down this entire time it was so funny this is your inheritance guys this is your family and this is not for everyone go out and cast out demons no there is a time and a place there is be wise but I'm saying if, if you're around something, if a, if a demon manifests your presence, it's because you have the power to cast it out. Don't go out there looking for demons to cast out. I hope we all have enough sense and have listened to enough teachings from our mom. And never do it in the presence of your leader, any of these things. But I'm saying things do happen and you need to know it. you have the power and authority because there will become a time where you need to use it. Amen. Go ahead, uh, Mrs. Renee. Hi, yes. Um, I just had a question. You said that after um they you y'all did all that self-deliverance and then you said that they didn't obey the prophet and then they lost it. And I was just going to ask you, like, so if you have self-deliverance in your home and God allow you to do self-deliverance on yourself, how how can you make sure that you don't lose it since you don't have no prophetic instructions? Okay, this is a great question. Self-deliverance is amazing. Like Baba T always talks about, she started with self-deliverance. Literally, you can lay on yourself, command it to go. If you know you're struggling with something, if you know something inside of you, you can't cast it out of yourself. I'm telling you, you have the power and authority to do that. Maintaining deliverance. And Mama T has a really deep live on this because she does, she does a whole teaching on it, always like after an encounter. Because so many people are... Um, receiving deliverance but deliverance is i always say deliverance is step one the demon being casted out is the first step of your freedom what comes after that is maintaining that deliverance because deliverance is first of all deliverance is the presence of god in your life in in, in every area of your life so to maintain deliverance it requires the presence of god it requires the entrance of this world, of the word. Because you can't just have a demon cast out to you. If you do not renew your mind and work on your soul, you will be back doing the same thing. So it's a process of, and Papalo teaches, they both teach super deep on this. You have to deal with the soul, your character, the trauma, what is causing. You have to address the soul. 
So for example, if you're doing self delivery, just give me a topic of self delivery that you're like, uh, what area? Just give me an example. Um, mental anguish, mental illness, things like that. I know that um, when self delivery, when I was going through self delivery. I think he was breaking, well, I don't think, but he did break, um, like, a generational curse. Okay. So, let's do, let's do, um, let's say it's, like, mental torment, for example. And you're, and you're doing self-deliverance, and you know something's attacking your mind. And you come with power and authority, and you get that thing off your mind, and you have clarity. You have, first of all, this is just, I'll give you practical tips on what I would do to maintain what, what God just did scripture stand on the word of god you have to be able to know and believe and say this is true god has given me a sound mind you know what i mean not yeah. the spirit of fear but the, the spirit of power and love and a sound mind you have to stand on that two something practical getting away from anybody any ties deliver i'm telling you deliverance one of the fastest ways deliverance is cutting ties with anything that you know you're not supposed to be with friendships circle groups people who have wrong thinking get away from all of that super important because that's the fastest way to go backwards being around people who their spirits are trying to jump on you um, this is just practical tips because I didn't hop off for two seconds. Um, scripture, your friend circle, leading, being led by the spirit, being in church, having a covering. Your demonic attacks come to zero when you have a true covering. Because that means they have to go through who's above you to come to you. But it really is about renewing your mind letting the word enter you and dealing with the things of your soul. If there's an area where you feel like you're being attacked, something happened to you in, child, in your childhood where they're using that to mentally attack you, you have to deal with that thing. You have to go to the root. Deal with shame, deal with guilt, go with all these things. Let God heal all of those areas. Are you ready, Marla? Deodorant, deodorant, deodorant. Brush your teeth, hair. Yeah, I Okay. Okay. All right. Hurry up. Any breakfast? We're about to leave. Right now. Can you grab my purse? Um. And I'll say this. What is the what is Jesus' is name mean? What does deliverance mean? What does Yeshua mean? Yeshua, Jesus is deliverance. The presence of God is deliverance. So when you immerse yourself with the presence of God, when you stay in the presence of God, that is truly how you maintain deliverance. Does that help you? Yes, thank you so much. Jesus is deliverance. All right, guys, let me get off. Um, I gotta leave. I love you all. It always be the days when you're the most tired that God goes the longest. It's just a fact. I love you guys. Make sure you're here next Wednesday. We have John Ramirez on the 12th, November 12th. Be there. The tickets are only like $30. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be so crazy. John Ramirez is amazing. Mama T and him in the same room is about to be dumb. About to be dummy. Um, I love you all. We will be back on tomorrow for 6 a.m. I feel like we have more upcoming events. Encounter. Get your encounter tickets. Do not miss this for the world. We have the most amazing guest speakers ever. Even if it was just Mama T and Papalo, it would be the greatest conference in the world. <laughs> but they have more people coming on too. I love you, Desiree. All right. I love you guys. I'll see you later. Bye.